During a recent segment on HLN, one of its hosts wanted to question whether or not Edward Snowden should be on Twitter. Now, uh, Yasmin Vazugian, who is Armenian possibly, because she has an Armenian appear. last name. Yes. She does, yeah. Um, she uh, w was mentioning a tweet by George Pataki, and the tweet said, that Twitter is a great American company that should not give a platform to terrorists or traitors. Uh, shut down Snowden today. All right, so Snowden did start his own Twitter account, and of course, some conservative politicians in the U.S. are not too happy about it. Now, uh, Yasmin wanted to bring on someone with a counterpoint, and as a result, uh, the guest booker for her program decided to have uh, a well-known tweeter on the show. All right, so to test the governor's argument, Vasukian decided to run it by prominent Twitter user John Hendren. Unfortunately, her staff did not book John Hendren, the Al Jazeera journalist, but rather John Hendren with the <laughs> yes, with the fart handle on Twitter. He's a comedian and a troll. Now, the interview actually started off pretty great. Take a look. <laughs> Why do you think Snowden is any different, according to uh, Pataki? Oh, well, he's a hero. I mean, he's doing what any one of us should have done in that situation. He's uh, got a voice. He's been isolated for so long. He's got valid things to say. I mean, we should listen to what he says. But some people don't think he's a hero. Well, they're wrong. I mean, that's, they're, he's doing the most patriotic possible thing. Okay. I mean, that sounds like it's going pretty well, especially since they accidentally booked the wrong person. But sure. then things devolve a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's look. There is classified information out there uh, that John Oliver was referring to that was released that could have feasibly harmed people. Do you think Snowden's actions were worth that risk? Well, you know, to say that he couldn't harm somebody, uh, you know, with what he did, uh, like he could, uh, absolutely he could have. Um, but I think to cast him out to, uh, to make him invalid in society uh, simply because he has scissors for hands, I mean, that's, that's so strange because, I mean, people didn't get scared until he started uh, sculpting shrubs into dinosaur shapes and whatnot. All right, well, now Snowden's living in Russia. At Chris Zapp tweeted this. Dear Edward Snowden, what do you make of the massive Russian misinformation campaign going on? Listen, some people say it's hypocritical that Snowden has asylum in Russia. Russia has a, a lot of human rights violations. Well, yeah, casting him out is just completely wrong. Um, we're, we're treating him like an animal, like a, uh, somebody who should be quarantined and put away. Uh, just because he was created on top of a mountain by Vincent Price and uh, incomplete with scissors for hands and no heart, uh, Edward Scissorhands is a complete hero to me. But what about the choice that he made to live in a country like Russia? I mean, where else is he going to go? You know, uh, we cast him out. Like, we, uh, we got scared when he poked a hole in a waterbed with his scissor finger. Like, that was uh, just unreasonable of us. Well, John, I appreciate you giving us your opinion. Thank you. That was, um, I had not that was the that best segment I've ever seen in my life. I've never, I can't even, I couldn't look, so perfectly. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't look at uh, it. His Twitter handle is at fart. Somebody typed it on the thing and put it on TV. Hang on, I'll be here. At <laughs> F-A. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> is no one listening? No one. No, no one in the control room no. is listening to this? No, the reporter isn't listening. No, she's not listening at all. She's just hoping I mean, it'll... Granted, though, it's the kind of conversation you'd have on that set, because it's not like she's delivering the news. She's, like, in the break room. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It is, uh... But... Oh, boy, I feel bad for everybody involved with that. Okay, so I don't Except know. Except John No, no, he, he's no, he had a good, he had a good day. <laughs> yeah, he did he, have a good day. That yeah. was, that was the best example of trolling I've ever seen in my life. That was, look, it was entertaining, and I don't want to be too hard on. I don't know. I don't want to be too hard. But you don't want to be too hard on on uh, on the reporter. Yeah, on, yeah but, the, but you're right. The Why reporter not? wasn't listening to his answers. Like she kept asking him serious questions and. Look, part of the reason why I don't want to be too hard on her is because I know how a lot of these television news shows work, okay? What you do is, as the anchor, you go in and you have producers who literally hand you the questions that you need to ask. And so when you're not forced to kind of think for yourself, then you just ask the questions and you move along. And that's exactly what happened there. Well, I, I, you know, I, <laughs> look, I've, I've, you know, I've done a number of live interviews in my life and... 
And yeah, I sp and so there'll be a segment producer and some, you know, I mean, when I did it, I didn't, I never had people write me questions. Uh, partly that's because of the places I worked. Yes. There wasn't like staff for it. Um, but you, you have to be aware. Yeah. You, you have to, this is a, con you have to listen to what the person's saying because they might say something that you need to go off script and follow up. The conversation might go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, in general, though, just to leave these people out, just this, uh, a segment, just again, where you just get someone from the other side, let's get a Snowden supporter, we have, it's just, none of it's interesting. Mm -hmm. None of it's interesting, none of it is furthering the dialogue, none of it is bringing us closer to truth or understanding, yeah. and your, your goal should always be the truth, and here's a moment where a woman who might be good at her job, I don't know, I've never, I don't know her. I've uh, never seen her before. Um, but the, it was a terribly, terribly embarrassing moment. And she appeared not to be listening when he described what four times Edward says. At hands? least three times. Yeah, at least My three times. My favorite part was when he talked about poking a hole in the water. He bed. said the name in case they didn't get it. Like yeah, at first yeah. he just talked about scissors for hands. Yeah. And then he was like, "You're missing Vincent, this." And that Vincent Price, <laughs> right, Vincent Price, Price him on <laughs> top of the mountain. Right. I'm talking about <laughs> Edward Scissorhands. Just FYI. Yeah. Uh, that was a that was a uh, that was a tough that was a tough moment. That, that was, was a tough, tough moment. moment. Um, that is hard to watch. That is hard for me to watch. Yeah. Look, I've made mistakes on the air, and it's hard. Everyone to does. And and in terms of, like, the guest booker, yeah, you should have paid closer attention to the handle fart, right? And then when you superimposed it uh, for the segment, that should have raised a few red flags. But sometimes you make mistakes, right? Sometimes your workload's heavy. You don't know what you're doing. I don't know if the guest booker is new. Mistakes happen. I get it. But I think the, the worst part was... As the trolling's occurring, the questions keep coming in. The serious questions keep coming in. And I, I honestly, I feel terrible for her um, because this video's out there. Yeah, but if she could have somehow <clears throat> turned it around and caught on and done something, she wouldn't come out looking quite so bad. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because then every other interview you're on, you realize she's not listening to what any of those people are saying either. Yeah, and it shows you that there isn't really just, deep analysis into whatever the topic is or whatever the interview is. There's an effort, look, I get, I fall into it too. There's an effort to sound smart instead of being smart. And an effort to sound like you know what you're talking about instead of just knowing what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And there's never any moment on television when you can't say, remember, no matter what the producers do, no matter what anything, no matter when the commercial breaks for, if you say, uh, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. We're going to check into what's happening here, and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. They'll pull back. They'll go to that wide shot. It may take them 20 seconds to find a commercial. You just fiddle with your computer and stay there. If you don't talk, they'll go to break. They'll do it. They'll do it every time. They will. And then you'll go, I don't know what's happening. I think we're being trolled. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but also, Ben, do you agree that when you're with most people who do the news, right, there is like this negative reaction and this resistance to just confess when you don't know something. Totally. It's, right? It's, nope. Just just yeah. admit it. And and I remember I look, I'm like that too. Every once in a while I'll be talking about something and I don't know. I don't know a particular detail that's asked of me. And I, I would feel like this pressure to like not make something up, but try to like find something, right? To answer that question appropriately. And then I realized, no, you usually end up giving people misinformation when you do that. Just confess that you yeah. don't know. There's not nothing wrong with that.